Hi, and welcome to Storytime. I hope you're well. Um, it's I hope you're having fun this summer. You're doing fun things and you're just kind of relaxing and you're getting to be outside. Maybe you're splashing in puddles because we keep having rain. Um, maybe you've gotten to go to the pool or play in the woods or ride your bike or whatever it is. Maybe you like to sidewalk chalk in your driveway. So I hope you're doing all of those things. Maybe you're blowing bubbles or building forts or, you know, going to the playground. So whatever it is. Um, I hope you're getting the chance to really be a kid. So we're going to continue um, reading books that kind of help us to understand that um, God's love is for everyone in all places, no matter where you live, um, no matter what you look like or how you um, worship. And so last time I read the book, this book, Faith, um, that showed pictures of kids all over the world of all different um, religions and how, though, even though our, we live in different places and we maybe worship in different ways, how a lot of the things that we do are the same. Like we go to a certain place maybe to worship, we all pray, maybe we have some kind of meditation, uh, maybe we have special holidays and celebrations, that there are just certain things that we all do, maybe in a little bit different way, but they're all ways um, that we use to connect to God. So today, um, I'm going to read this book called Jerusalem Sky, and it is by Mark Podwall. Jerusalem Sky, Stars, Crosses, and Crescents. So um, if you think about symbols of major religions, you would know that, for example, a cross is a symbol of um, Christianity. So like here, I'm wearing this cross, which is a cross I love. It's been in my family for a long time, and I always enjoy um, enjoy wearing it. So those that's a symbol that you would see when you come to our church. Stars would be a symbol of um, Judaism or people who are Jewish. Um, there are, a, there's a six-sided star. So, um, and crescents are um, a symbol of um, the Muslim faith. So, anyway, uh, those are all things that you would see in the sky over Jerusalem. And let's go ahead and read this. So Jerusalem is a beautiful city and I had the chance to go there a couple of years ago. It was really fascinating and I hope at some point, if you get the chance that you will also go to the city of Jerusalem. And there's an old city of Jerusalem and it's ancient and it has a big wall around it and it's um, divided into four sections. So there's a Jewish section and a Muslim section and a Christian section and an Armenian section. And um, so it's kind of interesting when you move from place to place how things change just a little bit, um, but it's super interesting and it's just cool to see um, all kinds of different people sort of living together in that space. So Jerusalem sky. With wonders and miracles, the sky over Jerusalem touches the world below. It lets down a ladder for angels to climb. At midnight, it can be as bright as midday. It even knows when not to rain. Legend says that Jerus the Jerusalem sky has a hole in it made by a jewel that fell from God's throne. Through this hole, hopes reach heaven. Hmm, that's an interesting legend. But hope is important, isn't it? Hope is kind of part of our faith, I think. Some believe that halfway between heaven and earth, the Jerusalem sky is home to a city with walls of silver, gates of pearl, and streets of gold. Every autumn gust tossing a leaf, every wind cloud storming overhead, every spring breeze rustling a treetop, every summer rainbow promising sunshine is said to be born in the Jerusalem sky. Isn't that a pretty picture? I wonder if you could draw a picture like that. It is also said that each morning the sun blazes red while awakening the world because its rays pass through the roses on Jerusalem's hills. Jewish, Jewish sages tell how night after night a full moon shone while Solomon was king. Under his rule, the temple was built. For the seven years it took to complete, rain fell only after dark so that the work would not be delayed. When enemies burned down the temple, the Jerusalem sky blew a crying wind that scattered the temple stones far away. Wherever a stone landed, a synagogue was built. 
by the stones that remain, Jews still pray. I wonder if you have any friends who are Jewish, and I wonder if you know anything about their synagogue, um, which is the place that they would go to worship like you would go to church. So here is a Jewish symbol, the menorah, um, that is a symbol of Hanukkah, which is a celebration of light. Um, and we talk about light in our faith tradition as well, don't we? We talk about light a lot as a symbol. Christians tell of a wondrous star in the Jerusalem sky, which brightened the winter night announcing the news of Jesus's birth. And they tell how 33 years later, a spring afternoon's daylight blackened into starless night when Jesus died on a small jagged hill, now crowned by a great church. That is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and that's kind of a picture of it. It's all, everything is packed very closely together. So that is a very popular place um, for Christians to visit, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Muslim, Muslims tell of the Prophet Muhammad's night journey in which midnight glowed like day when he rode through the sky on a flying horse, then reached heaven on a stairway of light. Light again, hmm. Where Muhammad rose to heaven now stands a mosque with sky blue stones and a dome of gold shining like a second sun. And there it is, the Dome of the Rock. That's a place you can still visit. It's really beautiful. That's in a section of the old city of Jerusalem. Atop these majestic moments, monuments to miracles, synagogue stars, church crosses, mosque moons, meet under the Jerusalem sky and merge their shadows. Jerusalem is so loved that it has 70 names. Though it is called the city of peace, no place has been fought over more. 17 times torn apart and rebuilt. Perhaps possessing Jerusalem is like trying to own the sky. Yeah, it is kind of amazing that people kept coming in and taking it over and then someone else would come in and take it over again 17 times. That's a lot. Even so, People from everywhere every day gather in the city, a city said to have been, been mapped on God's palm long before our world began, with prayers for peace and miracles all addressed to one God. Hope lights the Jerusalem sky. Isn't that pretty? So that is our book, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Jerusalem is a really special place for um, our faith, for people who are Jewish, for people who are Muslim. Um, because so many important things happened in that area. And like I said, I hope that you get the chance to go there. But it's the really important part of that is that um, in that space right now, all of these people um, kind of cohabitate or live together in a peaceful way and they're all able to um, worship the way they want to. Now Jerusalem is actually in the country of Israel and you might think about Israel as a place where a lot of Jewish people live and that is true but there are people of many different faiths um, who, who live there as well. So um, I hope that maybe this will spark an interest in you that maybe you would learn about other faith traditions and I hope that maybe you and your family could have a talk about different faiths and maybe talk about the different people you know who worship in different ways. And you may know people who maybe don't necessarily go to church, but they'll say they're really spiritual. So it's all of those um, ways of being connected and worshiping are all important. So whatever the uh, person's faith tradition is, um, that plays uh, an important part probably in their lives. And I think it's really mostly all about experience, it's experiencing um, God's love and God's presence with us and our connection, how we're all sort of connected um, in a special way. So um, I hope you are having a wonderful time. I hope you're having a wonderful summer and I hope you'll come back to visit me soon.